Hi, I'm Paul. Welcome to Overflow Today. Many scientists teach this. We don't need to believe in God anymore because science explains everything for us. Is that valid? Hi everyone, welcome back to Overflow Today. I'm Joseph Hanford, and we're joined today by Dr. William Dembski, who is a senior fellow at the Discovery Institute. Dr. Dembski, on college campuses today, one objection that students might hear in a conversation would be, I don't really need to believe in God because Darwinism and macroevolution and science explain everything for me. How would you respond to that type of statement if you were in such a conversation? Well, it's it's very common objection. I mean, people put it in terms of, well, science has disproven the Bible, or science has made faith uh, unnecessary. If you're a materialist, I mean, how did how could things have gotten here? Basically, you've got the laws of chemistry and physics, and you've got matter, which has to then, over time, organize itself. The Earth, at one point in its history, according to standard cosmology and physics, was too hot and tempestuous to support any life. So life had to emerge. Life hasn't been here forever. Aristotle thought life was here forever, but, you know, Life can't have been here forever, so how did it come about? Well, if there's no intelligence to produce life, then it's got to organize itself. And basically, then you, what, what, when, what, what can organize itself? It's material particles that work by forces of attraction and repulsion. That's pretty thin soup, a pretty thin soup on which to try to build organisms as complex as us. And that's, that's what they're, they're left with, though. And so uh, what to design people seems like just a ridiculous theory uh, a ri ridiculous approach to understanding the complexities that we see, because we see engineering everywhere in biology. Uh, to them, that's the only possible option. And for them, intelligent design is just a place you cannot go. Uh, so there's a real clash of worldviews, I think. And I think that's what makes this uh, evolution, creation, evolution, design controversy so much more uh, a clash than a lot of other scientific controversies. I mean, scientific controversies are out there. They've been known. Uh, there's a very famous book in the philosophy of science called *The Structure of Scientific Revolutions*, which uh, goes over this. I mean, and, and you know, people have had very hard feelings about scientific clashes and, and theory change in science and how that happens. But uh, when it comes to this conflict, I mean, you've got worldview issues. The nature. It's not just the theory itself, but the very nature of science that's under. under so it's 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 a huge controversy, and the scientific establishment wants to keep this at bay as much as possible. They want to always characterize this as a religion versus science controversy. And the, the important thing to understand: this is not religion versus science; this is science versus science. The thing is, the science has very deep philosophical and theological implications. <laughs>